Hi, I'm Johnny from UltimatePaperMache.com, and I've got two coats of primer on my horse, and it's ready to be painted, but I did promise you that I was going to show you how I sculpted this kind of crazy windblown mane on it. In the first two videos, I've already showed you how the pattern pieces go together, and I've also shown you how I put the paper mache and paper mache clay on here. Before I get started on this video, I want to remind you that this was an experiment. If you think of ways that would make this process easier, or if you think that it would be more realistic if it was done your way, please let us know in the comment section down below. We would really like to hear those ideas. Now, because I had it laying down when I was putting all of this material on there, it didn't occur to me that my center of balance is right here. You saw in the first video that I did on this uh, horse pattern that it needs to be balanced uh, with a, a weight in the bottom, and I showed you how I did that just with a, maybe a cup and a half of sand in a plastic bag. And then, <laughs> because it was laying down and I wasn't thinking about it, I was just experimenting, I put all of this weight on the back behind that weight. Fortunately, it didn't make any difference. It just stands up just fine and it didn't unbalance it. It isn't tipping over. I've uh, kind of pushed on it a little bit just to make sure it doesn't fall over easily and it doesn't, but that was pure luck. <laughs> so you'll want to think about that if you want to put a whole lot of weight on the mane that you're going to put on your horse. And if you do decide to make it go straight out like this behind him. Oh, and I want to remind you, if you want to make a horse sculpture like this and you want to use my pattern, you can find it now, ultimatepapermache.com slash horse pattern. So let's get to this. I decided when I was at the store that this um, crochet thread would make a really good mane. Because it's, it's kind of about the same thickness as, as horse hair. My first plan was to wrap the thread around this cardboard. And I, it, it seemed like a really good idea, but it's going to take forever. So I've discovered that I can actually get a hank off of the roll like this. And if I get a whole bunch of little hanks like this, I think I can, I think I can keep them from getting too tangled up. And what I'm doing is I'm just putting my fingers under this thing, you know, right at the top kind of gathering some of the thread and just pulling it off. That wasn't too hard. I'm just mixing up some drywall joint compound and some Elmer's glue. It's a PVA glue. The joint compound and the glue I probably equal amounts. It's about four o'clock this morning when I realized that, oh wait a minute, you might want to know these other things too. Now the first one is, you just saw me mix up the drywall joint compound and the glue that I'm going to be using to make a nice solid sculpted mane with the, with the crochet thread. If you have used the paper mache clay for your horse, you know that the drywall joint compound and the glue are two of the ingredients. And in this case, in, in place of the paper to, for reinforcement, we're using the crochet thread. So it dried really super hard. So it's a a great option, but if you don't have those ingredients, you can still put a mane on your horse. Uh, you might not, you might have a hard time though making a sculpted mane that goes straight out like it's blowing in the wind. You would probably want one that hangs down like a normal horse is when he's just standing still. You would still want to use something to make the, the yarn or the thread hard, so go ahead and dip it into some uh, glue. Any kind of glue would work. Or you could probably use the cooked flour and water paste that I used when I was putting paper strips and paste on my horse. Dip your threads in into the glue or the paste and squeeze off as much as you can so it's not drippy and then go ahead and put it on your horse uh, just right on that flange like I'm going to be doing in the next part of the video. Now the other thing that you're going to see in the video is that because I'm making my sculpted mane going straight out and gravity you know, it was, was going to be working against me. I had to create a really crazy contraption in order to allow it to dry flat. But if you're going to make a, a mane that goes straight down, gravity actually works with you <laughs> instead of against you. So be sure and put it on your horse while the horse is standing up on the base, and then it'll flow down just like it's supposed to. Remember though, that the more material that you use, whether you're using the the joint compounding glue mixture or just plain glue or plain, plain old paste, 
the more threads that you use, the thicker it's going to be and the longer it's going to take to dry. I used a whole lot of thread in mine. It probably added three days to the project because of all the drying time between each step. So if you're in a hurry, keep that in mind. I, I think that covers everything that I forgot to tell you before, so let's go ahead and get back to the video. <laughs> I have to put something under it because gravity would take over. And I just happen to have this stuff. Uh, I think a plastic bag filled with other plastic bags would work too. I just am trying to get a flat surface. I think that works. So I've got it taped to my table. So maybe it won't move. This can get messy, so I'm going to use my gloves. And this is also going to have to be done in two rounds because I'm going to be putting the the hair on this side of my little flanges and then I need to put it on that side too. So I'll have to have this part dry and then I'll turn it back over and do the other side. I'm going to cut my hank in half down at the bottom. Now I'm going to use a different table, but I'm going to be dipping this in there and then squishing as much out as I can, but I don't have any space left here. So I'm going to do it over here on another table right next to me. Okay, I've already got this on here and I'm going to take it off because it's too long and I know that I'm not going to like it. And then I'm going to go ahead and, and finish this up exactly the same way, but with shorter pieces. I think about that long, which is about what, five inches? We'll see. If you try this, make sure that you do some um, image searches. I did a, a image search for Maine in the wind, and it came up with some really interesting photographs, and there were also some paintings that were really nice. They might give you some ideas. Just going back over it, because I see some of the threads just don't have enough goo to harden up. So that's how I did it. <laughs> I think it turned out great, but I don't know that I would do it exactly the same way. So leave your comments down below if you can think of any ideas that would make it easier or less messy. I think you can see that it was, um, I, I had the uh, the joint compounding glue stuff all over me by the time I was finished. I, it, it really was a mess. Um, you're probably more careful than I am, but um, any ideas that you have, I would really appreciate it, and I know everybody else would too, so please be sure to share. So now that this video is all done, I get to paint him, and that's what I'm going to do today. At this point, I don't actually know what color I'm going to paint him. There are so many different possibilities, but I'll put a photo right here of how it actually turns out, so you'll know what I decided before I do, <laughs> sort of. Thanks for watching, and go make something, and come visit me ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.